There's a trend going around on TikTok right now where people from different professions are saying the top five things they would not do as a result of being in their profession. So I'm hopping on the trend and if your goal is weight loss, these are the five things that I would never do as a weight loss coach. Hours of cardio, like doing cardio for hours on end. And this is for a lot of different reasons. Yes, technically, cardio, especially high intensity cardio, is going to burn a lot more calories than a lot of other types of exercises. But that's not necessarily like an absolute good thing, like all pros, no cons when it comes to weight loss. If you pair lots of cardio with a calorie deficit, which is required for weight loss, if you need more information about that, check out this calorie deficit video that I made. What happens is you're increasing your likelihood that you're going to burn some of your muscle and lose muscle. Now, when you gain weight, you're always gonna gain a combination of fat and muscle. And when you lose weight, you're always gonna lose a combination of fat and muscle. There are things that we can do to bias one or the other. So if our goal while we're gaining weight is to gain as much muscle and as little fat as possible, there are things we can do to help encourage that. And the same is true for weight loss. When we're losing weight, we really don't wanna lose our lean muscle mass. And so there are things we can do to minimize loss of lean muscle. And avoiding hours and hours of cardio is one of them because you're inevitably gonna lose some of your muscle. It's a good idea when we're thinking about our exercise strategy for weight loss to include resistance training activities. And this doesn't have to mean weight training. It can, it's the most optimal, but we just need something that's challenging the muscle. And cardio alone is really not gonna do that. And you might be like, well, I don't really care if I lose my muscle, like I don't wanna look muscular. Here's the thing, two things. A lot of times the appearance you're going for, especially if you would describe that appearance as toned, does involve either maintaining some of your muscle mass or even gaining some. And secondly, the more muscle mass that you have, the more calories you burn at rest because muscle is more metabolically active than fat. That's why you've got these huge jacked bodybuilders who are eating like thousands and thousands of calories every day because they need that amount just to maintain, let alone gain even more muscle. And guess what? If you're a yo-yo dieter or a roller coasterer, as I describe it in my free masterclass, the one thing you need to achieve sustainable weight loss, you can check out the link in the description, is that when you repeat the cycle over and over again of decreasing your calories significantly and not doing things that are gonna help maintain your lean muscle, you actually, get worse and worse every time you do that roller coaster or yo-yo cycle. Your metabolism gets worse and worse and you get further and further away from the physique that I think most people are going for. Again, I don't wanna tell you what you wanna look like or what you should look like, but just in my experience working with hundreds of women, I have a pretty good idea of what most people are going for. The next thing I would never do as a weight loss coach is only rely on the scale to track progress. Now. It kind of goes in with the last one when we were talking about how our goal should not be to just decrease the scale as much as possible because you're going to lose some muscle and that's going to put you in a less advantageous position to maintain that muscle or not gain it back. Because of all of that and then some, there's so many different reasons why the scale may not be showing you progress that's happening, which would then make you think that you're not getting results, causing you to change your strategy, even though your current strategy was actually working. And this is a huge reason why I see people get stuck and feel like they cannot figure out how to lose weight is because they're changing their strategy too quickly. So progress tracking is a super important piece of your weight loss strategy puzzle. I have a whole entire video on scale weight if you wanna check it out, but the synopsis is that you need to be utilizing the scale in, in a smart way, meaning you know why you're weighing yourself that day, you're doing it at the correct time, you're interpreting the data correctly, meaning if the scale goes up one day, it doesn't make you panic and feel like you're not getting results. And even if you have a scale that tracks like your body fat percentage water, all of those other things that those scales claim to track, I still don't think you should rely just on the scale because those are incredibly inaccurate. I personally, I don't think, not going to say never, but I don't think I would ever get a scale that tracked anything other than body weight because they're more expensive and basically useless. So instead of just a scale, I would love to see you tracking maybe photos or videos, like progress photos and videos, measurements, also looking at more subjective things like how you feel, your energy levels, how your clothes are fitting, things like that. The next thing is that I would never just like remove all of the junk food or treats or like temptation foods from my house. And I would never recommend that you do that either. I know that this is like a common thing that we feel like might help us because without those temptations, we're not gonna eat that. We see this a lot also in like TV and movies and also in the Mr. Beast, I didn't eat for 30 days video. The whole thing was staged. 
I talk about that in the video, but he had this whole clip where he's like getting rid and he's like, I don't want a single calorie in this house. That's such a like, I'm starting my weight loss journey, like stereotype moment. But what this does is demonizes all of those foods. And it means that the next time you come into contact with those foods, it's gonna feel a lot harder to resist those because you're gonna be like, wow, I never get to have these. Maybe I should just have it now. Or even if you plan to just have those foods in that one moment and you really stick to your guns and don't keep them in your house, what happens is you're probably gonna binge that food because you're like, this is my one chance. That's why I have a problem with cheat meals, cheat days, all of that stuff. When I first met my husband, that's what he would do. He would be super, super strict throughout the week. And then on the weekend, he would go crazy. And then we moved in together and I'm like, I want Cookies, ice cream, candy, chips, all of those things need to be in the house all of the time. The tough thing too that I wanna bring up about this one is that sometimes improving your relationship with food needs to happen before you can lose weight. And sometimes, sometimes those things can happen at the same time. You can improve your relationship with food while losing weight, but sometimes they need to happen separately. And that can be a big challenge for some people because they don't wanna have to prolong their weight loss any more than they already have. But if the only way you can lose weight is to either reinforce or make worse your relationship with food, you're not gonna maintain that weight loss. So I would much rather you improve your relationship with food first and then lose weight because you're gonna be way more likely to actually keep that weight off long-term, which stops the yo-yo roller coastering and actually sets you up for better success at maintaining that because of all the other stuff we talked about with the hours of cardio, the yo-yo dieting, the blah, blah, blah. I also would never do keto, intermittent fasting, or taking my calories too low, any kind of diet that you can Google. I wouldn't do any of them. Because the problem is when somebody else sets up food rules for you, you don't pay attention to your specific needs, your unique needs. If you like carbs, keto is not gonna work for you. If you're hungry in the morning, intermittent fasting is not gonna work for you. And taking your calories too low is just not gonna work for anybody. I've said this before, I actually posted a quote post on Instagram about this, is that the diet that is best for you is probably not on Google and nobody else is doing it because you are a unique person. So it makes sense that nobody else is gonna be eating the same way that you eat or should be eating the same way that you eat. The other problem that I have with all this stuff is diets are typically pretty restrictive. Even if you do only enjoy carbs on occasion, maybe you're not a big carb person, keto is still probably gonna feel restrictive for you. Even if you don't eat breakfast all the time, intermittent fasting is probably still gonna feel restricted for you. I think it's okay to maybe get inspiration from other diets, but you should definitely not follow them rule for rule without taking your own needs into consideration. What I see all the time, and this holds true for that roller coastering thing, is that if you're doing something really restrictive, maybe you can do it for a while. I went a period of time for seven months. I ate clean, super clean. I did get cheats occasionally, but they were clean cheats. Like, what does that even mean? Very toxic. I was prepping for my first ever bodybuilding competition. I didn't know any better. And I was working with a coach who also didn't know any better apparently. And just because I could sustain that diet for seven months straight doesn't mean that it was sustainable. At that time, I had an insane amount of willpower available to me, which I do not have available to me now. And I'm just very lucky that I didn't end up with like really, really messed up issues with food after that. And that actually initiated, it was a pretty slow cycle, like pretty slow roller coaster, but it was a roller coaster. I ended up on a roller coaster because I approached my bodybuilding competition that way, which did include weight loss for me. You just restrict until you can't restrict anymore and then you gain the weight back. And then you're like, wow, that restriction really worked last time. So I'm gonna do it again. And you just end up over and over and over again. So I would challenge you, instead of going back to that restrictive diet that worked, maybe redefine your definition of work or success. Now this one is a little bit tricky and I might get some people who disagree with this, but I would never compliment somebody on their weight loss without knowing as much context as possible. Now it's tough because as a weight loss coach who has thousands of people who follow me, who wanna share their weight loss successes with me and tell me how much I've helped them successfully lose weight, it still feels wrong for me to just automatically be like, oh my gosh, wow, you're amazing, congrats. Because I don't really know how they accomplished that. Because they watch my channel, I really hope that it was in a sustainable way, but I really don't know. And what I would hate to do is compliment somebody's weight loss who did it in a way that was not healthy for them. Because what I'm then doing is reinforcing and telling them good job for something that was ultimately harmful for them. And outside of the scope of my YouTube channel and social media accounts where people are wanting to celebrate their weight loss successes with me, I'll tell a story about when I was actually a go-go dancer pre-pandemic as my little side gig, and I had noticed that my manager lost weight. My manager was mean to me though. 
hated her, but I tried to be nice. And so I came back after a period of time of not seeing her for a while and I could tell that she had lost some weight. She had also expressed to me or just said some things that indicated to me that she had the goal of weight loss. But I also had known from other things she had said to me that she did not have a clear understanding of what healthy weight loss looked like. And I can pretty much guarantee that what she did was probably not healthy for her. And yet I was like, oh my gosh, you look so good. I didn't necessarily say specifically that she looked good because she lost weight, but I think that that was implied. And I left that interaction feeling really not great about it. And besides just not knowing how the weight loss was achieved, I also never want to spread the message that weight loss equals good. Even if somebody did it, it like actually lost weight, the way they went about losing weight was healthy. What if they actually didn't want to lose weight? What if they don't view weight loss as good? And I think this is where most people are coming from when they're saying stop complimenting people on losing weight because we're teaching people and just reinforcing this idea that it's better to weigh less, that you are more beautiful, more attractive if you weigh less, which I don't agree with. Obviously, obesity is linked to health conditions, but it's not just black and white. You cannot look at somebody, look at their body and know how healthy they are. This is probably a sliding scale, but I just think that we should all stay away from that and leave health concerns between the person and their doctor. One thing that I didn't add, but I think is worth mentioning is calorie tracking. I wouldn't ever completely discount it because I think it can be a great tool for some. I use it in my course, I used it on past clients, I use it myself, but it's really not for everybody. So calorie tracking may be on this list for you when it's not on the list for somebody else. So if you're unsure about calorie tracking, check out this video that I made about why you shouldn't count your calories. That's all I have, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.